ओके अस्सलाम वालेकुम एवरीवन होप यू आर डूइंग वेल सो इट्स रियली लेट एंड इट्स 12:40 एएम एंड यू हैव वेटेड अ लॉट बट आई गॉट रियली लेट फ्रॉम माय स्केड्यूल क्लासेस सो आई एम ट्राइंग टू एक्सप्लेन यू एट लीस्ट फर्स्ट टू क्वेश्चंस एंड देन आई विल मूव टू क्वेश्चन नंबर 8 सो आई विल एक्सप्लेन यू थ्री क्वेश्चंस राइट नाउ and if you wish uh, me to explain you the other questions then you can write in the comment and i'll get back to you and i'll also try to go live after some time for 10 15 minutes so if you wish to ask any question you may write in the chat so i'll explain you uh, some like questions live as well so uh, let's move to the questions and the question number 5 is Uh, explain the causes of inflation demand pull and cost push and consider which one of them is more likely during the period of economic stagnation such as covid-19 so in this question you have to uh, basically accomplish assessment objective 1 assessment objective 2 assessment objective 3 assessment objective 1 is knowledge for 3 marks assessment objective 2 is analysis for 3 marks assessment objective 3 is evaluation for 2 marks So this is how you you have to answer this question. So for assessment objective one, you have to first of all define what in inflation is, what is demand pull inflation, and what is cost push inflation. So inflation is the persistent rise in general price level over time, and demand pull inflation is a type of inflation that is caused by increase in aggregate demand in the country, and cost push inflation is caused by increase in cost of production. And then you have to analyze them with the graph as well. So for uh, like analyzing through the graph so you have to make the graph of demand pull inflation that will look like this so demand pull inflation i'm making shorten uh, aggregate demand aggregate supply curve so on x we have real gdp however if you wish you can make longer an aggregate supply curve as well so on y we have price level i'm using pl for price level so this is aggregate demand and this is aggregate supply equilibrium takes place at point e where demand and supply meet each other price level is p and real gdp is y increase in aggregate demand will shift aggregate demand curve to the right from ad to ad1 and equilibrium will move to e1 real gdp will rise to y1 and price level will increase to p1 so demand pull inflation is caused by higher aggregate demand and it may be due to high income level of the country and because of higher consumption government expenditure or investment in the country as well So it is good inflation because it although it causes price level to increase but it also increases real gdp of the country as well and aggregate demand is increasing so economic activity will also rise and now moving to the cost push inflation and cost push inflation is caused by rise in cost of production that lowers aggregate supply in the economy so again you have to write real gdp on x and you have to write price level on y so this is aggregate demand and this is aggregate supply and equilibrium is at e where price equilibrium is at e where price level and real gdp are p1 and y1 and now due to decrease in aggregate supply because of higher cost of production will shift aggregate supply to the left equilibrium will move to e1 price level will rise to p2 and real gdp will fall to y2 so it has led to rise in price level and it has led to fall in economic growth as well i have made aggregate short in aggregate supply curve if you wish you can make long in aggregate supply curve as well so both are accepted by the examiner and both can get equal marks and now you have to like conclude this question and for conclusion you have to write that consider which one is more likely uh during the period of economic stagnation economic stagnation is when economies are stagnant and economic activity is very low uh so when economic activity is very low then it will cause cost push inflation because aggregate supply will be low moving to uh part b assess whether internal consequences of inflation are more harmful than external consequences so again you have to give assessment objective 1 2 3 all of them so uh, define what inflation is what internal consequences mean what external consequences mean inflation is a persistent rise in price level over time general price level over time 
Internal consequences of inflation are the consequences of inflation within the national boundaries of a country and external consequences are the consequences of inflation beyond the boundaries of a country while trading with other countries. So now you can uh, explain three internal consequences like fiscal drag, you may write fiscal drag, you may use shoe leather cost and you may use fall in purchasing power of the consumers. And for external uh, consequences you can explain uh, like uh, fall in exports and you may write rise in imports and you may write balance of payment deficit. Uh, you may uh, write balance of payment deficit. So exports will fall because of high inflation because other countries will feel uncomfortable purchasing from you because of high inflation so exports will fall. Imports will rise because when local consumers think that local goods are expensive so they may purchase greater quantity of imported goods and balance of payment will move to deficit because exports are low, imports are high. Moving to the other question, explain the meaning of actual and potential economic growth with the help of de relevant diagrams, consider which is likely to be achieved due to improvement in technology. So first of all, you will have to define what economic growth is. Economic growth is rise in real GDP per capita over time. Actual economic growth is rise in GDP due to employment of previously unemployed resources. Potential growth is achieved due to the increase in quantity or quality of resources. And then you have to make the graphs of uh, these as well. So for actual growth, you will have to make the graph like this. So we can make a PPC diagram. You can make aggregate demand, aggregate supply curves as well. And you can make PPC diagram as well. So I'm using PPC because it is really simple to understand and simple to make as well. So initially PPC is OAB and any point inside the PPC like point C shows unemployment of resources where output of X good is X1 and output is of Y good is Y1. So if we move from point C to D then output of X good will increase to X1 and output of Y good will increase to Y1. So the movement from C to D shows employment of previously unemployed resources and it will lead to actual economic growth. Moving to the potential economic growth you can make the diagram for potential growth that will look like this. So you have to again label the diagram x good on x and y good on y axis. So we have PPC initially production possibility curve OAB and now if there is increase in quantity or quality of resources PPC will move to CD to the right and it is potential growth. And then you have to like move to the last part of the question if there is improvement in technology then which type of uh, economic growth is achieved. So improvement in technology is improvement in quantity, uh, quality of resources so it will cause potential growth and shift PPC to the right. And now moving to part B of this question, explain, uh, assess whether supply side policies, fiscal monetary policies are always effective to achieve economic growth, control inflation, unemployment or correct balance of payment. So examiner may ask one policy and one objective. I have mentioned uh, three policies, three objectives but uh, examiner will not ask all of them. He will pick only two, uh, only one policy and one objective. So first of all you have to define what supply side policies are. Supply side policies are the policies uh, of the government that manipulate aggregate supply in the country to achieve ma macroeconomic objectives. Or uh, then you have to say that subsidy is one of uh, subsidy is one of the supply side policy education and training of workers is another policy and capital expenditure of the government on long term projects is another policy so subsidy will increase investments production will rise and supply will uh, will also rise and prices will decrease education and training makes people more productive and efficient so uh, again it will increase aggregate supply and achieve macroeconomic objectives control inflation and increase employment Capital expenditure are the expenditure on long term projects like construction of roads, buildings, bridges, schools, colleges, universities. That is capital expenditure. Okay, so uh, this is how you will say okay, uh, supply side policies can achieve these objectives. But on the other hand, you will say that supply side policies are not always effective because subsidy given to the private sector may be misused, education and training. Uh, may be f taken for granted by the workers so they don't learn new skills and capital expenditure may be for the political gain like in many developing countries political leaders invest a lot of funds just to get their political gain and vote 
so that they can reach the parliament instead of uh, focusing on economic objectives of controlling inflation and unemployment and achieving economic growth. So, all the funds may be wasted. So, at the end you will have to conclude that in conclusion supply side policies are the good policies, but they are long term policies and in many cases they are misused by the political leaders or may be misused by the private investors as well if they are given subsidy and they misuse it. So, supply side policy will be a kind of failure. And next if examiner asks about fiscal and monetary policies then you will have to change uh, the tools like monetary policy as the tool of interest rate, exchange rate of currency and credit regulations, fiscal policy as the tool of taxes and government expenditure. Ok, so this is it for this video if you wish me to explain other questions as well then you may write in the comment and I will go live for us for 10 minutes after some time. So, if you wish you may connect there as well and you may ask the questions as well. So, see you uh, soon and I wish all of you best of luck for the exam tomorrow's exam. So, stay calm and keep in mind the assessment objectives uh, 3 assessment objectives assessment objective 1, 2, 3 and write every answer keeping in mind these assessment objectives then definitely your answers will be impressive and examiner will definitely award you very good marks. So, see you soon in the next video. Allah face.